Hello everyone and welcome to Oblivion Arrives. Uh, today I wanted to go through the Vanu available LMGs for the Heavy Assault class. These are the light machine guns that are faction specific to Vanu. Uh, kind of give a brief overview and uses for the weapon and also kind of my preference personally. Uh, I will make some Terran Republic comparisons. Uh, <laughs> I am not swapped to Vanu. Don't get that in your mind. Everyone keeps going, oh you're on Vanu now. No, 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 no. I, I, I play all three factions and I just kind of want to help players along. So let's get started here and take a look at what weapons we have available to us, uh, what situations you want to use them in, and what my preferred setups are. So starting out here, the flare. The flare is kind of a mid to long uh, heavy hitting LMG for Vanu. Uh, it's versatile, uh, has good attachments, 577 RPM, 167 damage, very nice muzzle velocity of 600 meters per second. Uh, you can increase that with high velocity ammo if you're firing at really long range targets so you can keep your damage being a little bit higher. Uh, it also does have access to soft point ammunition which is generally my preferred setup. Uh, there's not much of a loss in soft point other than a little bit of velocity uh, and extends your, your kill range for max damage to uh, 15 meters which it is 10 by default. So the additional five meters to make it perform a little bit better up close. But you're, if you are fighting long range, I, I do have both high velocity unlocked for it because I, I will use this as my long range weapon. Um, so overall, pretty much no question to go with the forward grip on it. Uh, compensator is also good. You're going to be aiming down the sights a lot. So re you reduce that vertical recoil a little bit more. And 2x scope is probably what I would go with because this is a long range oriented weapon and it is extremely dead, deadly in the right environment. So let's go ahead and take a field test with it real quick, show off the accuracy a little bit. Um, hip fire, meh, not so good. It, on all LMGs for the most part, hip fire is really not so good. There's a few you can put laser sights on to bring it in a little bit. But if you're hip firing with an LMG, it's probably going to end up you getting killed. So, very accurate. It does have a lot of pull. And you can also test to see which direction a pole is going by holding down the trigger and aiming straight down. So this one's pretty much a straight vertical, but it is a heavy vertical, so it is going to pull up quite a bit. So you're going to fight that. Without the compensator, it's even worse. So make sure you have a compensator on this if you're going to use it. Um, overall, this is my long-range weapon. Um, it, it can flex into a close-range scenario and do okay, but the fire rate is going to kill it more likely in that scenario unless you get the drop on someone. Moving on. Next one up, the Orion. The Orion is... Uh, well, it's hailed as one of the best guns of the game, and there's a damn good reason. So it used to have a faster movement speed um, when you were strafing. That, unfortunately, has been taken away from it. Um, there was too much lag warping and, you know, strafe warring with it. Uh, so a lot of ghosting for bad connections, and they just decided to rein that shit in, and that's probably a good move. Uh, so overall, this is the starter LMG for Vanu, and generally speaking, on every faction except maybe NC, the starting LMG is usually one of the best ones. Um, so this one is a CQB monster, and it also performs out to range decently. Uh, does have 50 rounds in the magazine, um, 540 muzzle velocity, so pretty decent. Uh, unfortunately, it does not have any attachments that are available for ammo, so you can't get soft point or HVA to make it longer or closer range oriented. But other than that, the damn thing is a laser. Um, it also doesn't have much in the barrel. Um, you could get a flash suppressor, but that's going to, you know, it, it's going to make you a little bit more visible in CQB engagements because you're going to pop up on the radar a little bit more. Um, you could also get a suppressor if you really wanted to, but that's going to cut your velocity even more and the damage is going to suffer as a result. So I don't recommend either one of those unless you're really keen on not showing up visibly when you pull the trigger. Um, but you're going to show up on the map, so it kind of counteracts that. Uh, optic, I mean, 1x, no question, this is a CQB monster, so in close quarters you are wanting a minimum zoom. 
Um, overall, I, I love the pull of this weapon. It's, you know, 750 R RPM at 143 damage. Uh, it goes straight up when you pull the trigger, and it's a fucking laser. So, reloads quick. And accuracy. I mean, look at that. It's even a long burst. And you can just look at... I mean, that just... It's a, it's a fucking laser. I mean, the thing is amazing. So, starter LMG. Araxium this first. You, I mean, if you're looking for a gun... This is your gun. When you start with a heavy assault on Vanu, you start with an amazing weapon. And you should be using this gun very frequently because it's so good. The only thing it suffers is when you go into a room and there's multiple targets. If you don't, you know, use your ammo correctly on heads, then you're going to be suffering and probably going for a pistol or reload. In either case, you're in trouble. Going right along. Next up, we have the Pulsar LSW. This is a light support weapon. So Pulsar LSW is very versatile. There's a lot of things it can do. Um, unfortunately, it does not have access to ammo, but it does have extended magazine and also a grip available. Laser sight is actually pretty good on this weapon, but again, it's an LMG. If you're using a laser sight, you're doing it wrong. Um, it, that's a personal opinion. Feel free to try it out and say, oh, you're wrong, Oblivion. Well, whatever, that's, that's fine, I'm wrong. Um, but I feel like I'm right, so we're going to go from there. Um, flash suppressor is available. Suppressor, so again, long range, not too much of an option. We don't have a compensator on it. Uh, does do 698 RPM at 143 damage. Um, unfortunately, that damage profile is going to be gated without soft point, so it's not going to go out to 15 meters. It's only going to have 10. Uh, optic, you want to go with the 1X. Um, 75 rounds in it by default. If you put the extended mag on, though, you're looking at 150, which is really where it shines, but you only have one full reload available to you. But if you empty 150 rounds, you're doing pretty damn good, in my opinion. Um, unless you're shooting at something that really does not need shot at. So, overall, this thing um, is very decent on accuracy. It's not great. The extended mag is going to hurt it. But for close range, it can get it there. Reload still very fast for having an extended magazine, which makes it really good for a CQB. This weapon is the weapon you shove up somebody's ass in the corridor. Um, if you watch my video, Pure Aggression, this is the gun that I am using. And you'll see me run in there with it and go through the magazine like crazy because I don't care about reloading. I have the LSW in my hands. As far as pull... You can see it does go to the right a little bit so you aren't going to have to compensate with that if you're doing any medium range shooting but if you're in close range the compensation should not be much at all this is a great weapon for up close um, but this is primarily used when reloading becomes an issue um, other than that the orion is superior simply due to the fire rate we can see fire rate 698 the orion had 750 so you're going to do more all right moving on the SVA-88. Um, this gun used to be the absolute fucking king of Vanu. Um, it had the fast strafe speed. It has 75 rounds in the magazine. It was really good on accuracy. Well, they nerfed all that shit. So, really, it's kind of left without a home. Um, and that's, that's a damn shame because this used to be my favorite uh, Vanu LMG back in the day. Uh, it was actually the first one I ever axiomed. So, overall, uh, attachments, it doesn't have soft points. So that kind of sucks. Long range, you're not going to be really using it for that. There are better guns for it. I guess I can do it, but why would you want to? Um, Ford grip is available. Also, laser sight. Compensator is available. And uh, 1X is probably good for this thing, or a 2X if you really want to. I usually stick with a 1 or 2, depending on if I'm going long range or not. Um, if, I, if I'm fighting up close, don't, don't use a 2X. You're going to hurt yourself because it's just longer to aim. So this thing, I believe, had a slight pull. Yeah, it's very, very minor on the recoil. Um, so it, it doesn't actually go left or right either. It's, it's just straight up. And as far as accuracy goes, we'll move over to the target. You can see a little bit better. I mean, it's still a damn accurate CQB weapon. So if you're looking for kind of an in-between of the Pulsar LSW and the Orion. This is your gun. Um, it gets 75 rounds in it, so you're not going to run into reload scenarios as badly. 
but again for that that extra 25 rounds you are going to give up some orion fire rates this thing is another 698 at 143 great muzzle velocity on it um but again you're you're going to lose 52 rpm just by swapping in for the ex extended 25 round magazine and as far as attachments goes you're still not getting soft points so it that's really the true difference right there so that being said let's continue all right um so the ursa uh the ursa in my opinion is a piece of shit um there there's a reason okay so if we look at the fire rate uh it is 550 at 167 damage the muzzle velocity is fucking amazing at 640 uh does it have hva ammo so this thing is a is a long range weapon there's no reason to use this up close ever um, now the 550 fire rate makes it a very slow firing weapon. We look back towards the flare getting 577. This thing again is a much slower overall on actual shooting. So um, you do have options of extended magazine and a forward grip. You probably want to use a grip on it. You probably want to slot HVA and ammo into it because this is going to be used for you know extreme range. Um, the fall off, there's no advantage to it really over the flare. So you're basically in a slower firing flare. Um, if you're having trouble and you know, you, you don't want the additional soft point versatility that the flare has and you want a slower firing gun, then the Ursa is for you. And some people will argue with me and say, oh no, the Ursa is fine. Uh, no, it, it really isn't. The flare is a superior gun overall. Um, this thing is, you know, pretty slow firing overall. I think it has a little bit of a pull. Yeah. Pretty much straight up, but it's it's so slow firing that it's easy to compensate for. We'll go over to the more lit target here. We can see with the 2X, it's pretty accurate. Um, very slow fire rate. Uh, again, I don't recommend this gun simply because the flare is superior and both rounds out the door per minute, uh, attachments available, you have SPA options on that, um, where this gun simply does not have it, and I, mean, I don't think the reload's that fast either. The flare reloads about the same speed, if not quicker. So, again, welcome to use it, but uh, I don't. I'll probably eventually him it, but we'll, we'll come to that eventually. The Maw. Uh, this is the most recently introduced uh, Vanu weapon. Um, I've used it kind of a little bit on other areas, but for this account, no. Um, I will say that, in general, it, this is a, like a, a CQB version of the Flare and Ursa. Um, it, it probably can extend out to mid-range decently. Uh, it does have 600 RPM, so the kick on it is going to be a little bit more but it does maintain that 167 damage profile and you can see the muzzle velocity decreases down to 550 so with the attachments you have soft point ammunition which is pretty much like yeah sure i'm using that because that'll give you additional five range on the damage fall off which means you're going to be killing faster up close um, the unstable ammo if you can't aim this is good or if you're trying to saturate a doorway this is good but you don't use this. D just, just don't fucking use this. It pretty much takes your headshot bonus out the door to, to like, you know, never be seen again. Um, this will get you killed. So I, I don't recommend unstable ammo unless you're having a lot of trouble aiming. Some people do. If you do, maybe that's a good thing for you. You'll hit more often because the round will be bigger. But your headshot bonus, even on an accidental headshot, is going to be complete trash. So. As far as what I would put onto it, there is a vented power core. Now, what this does is it makes it jerk more heavily to the right, I believe. And you you have no penalty for reloading in a, a spent max. So if you actually go through the 60 rounds on this thing at that fire rate, well, first off, you, you're doing good um, because you're still alive. And secondly, uh, the vented power core will allow you to do a short reload instead of a long reload. Uh, the long reload on this weapon, since it has a unique power core, will smoke if your graphics are up high enough. Har har, who has that right? Um, so you will see some additional effects with it. Um, but in general, this is not really that good to use unless you're really going through the ammo. Um, you'll benefit more from either an advanced laser sight to close it in a little bit more or the grip. Uh, as an LMG, I, I kind of favor the grip personally. Um, this is just basically a, uh, a flash suppressor, so it's up to you if you want to use it. Um, 
at night you may want to flip it on, but you'll show up on the map, so it's compensated for. Now, the Maw is one of the models that uh, was last introduced, um, so it does have access to different sites, and the the Lyra or Lyra uh, R1 here um, is probably what I prefer. It, you'll see the optic is much bigger overall, so we... Um, we can see a little bit more, but it's a little awkward to get used to at first. Um, now the reload's kind of cool. I can show it off a little fast here. That's slick. Um, so basically, just re reinserting the same power cord, and just turning it a little bit, I guess, to access a different port or something. Um, but uh, yeah, if you aim down the sight with this, I, I think it does have a right pull. Yeah, very minor. Very minor, but it's there. And there's that little bit of smoke. If you overheat it, you'll get a shit ton. And we'll do an overheat towards the end here. Uh, accuracy? So, um, overall, the accuracy is good, but you can see in longer bursts, it will kind of go a little wild um so we can see that you know that the shot pattern was generally on target but it was going a little bit wild i mean when you're aiming for the head you're going to be wanting short bursts so that way you can control it keep it on target overall cqb gun very good option if you're looking for a heavier hitter that's kind of unique that's the one to go for um continuing we have the last gun which is the VX-29 Polaris. I came in with some opinions about this, and let me tell you, I was wrong. Um, this gun I thought sucked, and I did not use this until well into my LMG career on Vanu, and um, I have to say that I was pleasantly surprised. Now, I'm going to get some hate for this, but on TR, the Rhino has almost no roll at all. In fact, if you test it out against the Bull, the only thing it has that's better is it has an advanced grip, which gives it no advantage. And it has a bigger magazine, um, where the Bull reloads quicker and is just more adaptable. It has more ammunition available to it. It's just it, it, Overall, it's just a better gun, better hip fire. You know, it's got soft point ammunition. The Rhino lacks all these things. Um, now, the Polaris is a mirror of the Rhino. However, now that I've said that, it isn't. The Rhino doesn't have a home. It's just kind of like, what does it do? The Polaris has a fucking home, let me tell you. So, this is one of those point-hold LMGs. Now, you're like, whoa, okay, I don't know what the fuck that is. What is a point-hold LMG? Well, the concept was they wanted to set these things apart, so they gave them 100 rounds to ammunition, the muzzle velocity is nice and high, it's 625, and this is designed for getting into a position and sitting there and putting down suppressing fire. Now, we all know on planet side, if you lay down suppressing fire, you're going to get shot, grenaded, missiled. I mean, it, it works to an extent to deny them for a little bit of time, but all, that's all you're doing is buying time. Um, now, I, I looked at the RPM on this, it said 659 at 143 damage. Wow, that's fucking terrible. And then I read the next one that says, at 20 meters. Yes. So that's the true advantage of this gun, is that at 20 meters, the damage profile is still as if you were point blank putting the gun to somebody's temple. So you're still getting full damage. Now, the Rhino does that too. But the problem is, is the Rhino only has access to HVA. Now, HVA ammo will shorten your range slightly and increase your velocity, which makes it kind of anti what you're trying to do with this gun. Um, you get a little bit more range down range with it, but up close, it gets a penalty. Now, the Polaris doesn't get that penalty. In fact, it has soft point ammo available to it, which is fucking amazing. So that 20 meters I just told you, yeah, you can extend that out to 25 meters. So 25 meters, it's like you're putting, the, again, the LMG straight up to the guy's temple and pulling the trigger which gives it a big advantage, and I mean fucking huge. Now, I would recommend putting a grip onto it and a compensator just to make it nice and controllable, and that's, again, where this thing just comes out ahead is the aim accuracy. Look at the stats, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.04. Holy shit. So 
when I started using this gun, I was like, whoa, what the fuck? Why is this so effective? Why is this so effective? And I had to revisit the stats to come up with the solution that, holy crap, this thing's dealing, you know, point blank damage at 25 meters and is a laser. So, needless to say, my favorite LMG on this faction is the VX-29 Polaris, and I don't know why. I still don't know why. Whenever I pull this damn thing out, I kill people all over the place. It's ridiculous. I don't have to reload that often. It's just it's so accurate at claiming those headshots out to mid-range, and even at long range, it's just so goddamn accurate that it is just the perfect gun. The only time it really suffers is if you point blank with somebody and you're in an RPM contest, and if you're doing that, Mm, that's when you want to consider a different weapon. But at the same time, the Polaris can pull it off. So, looking at this thing, um, the reload on it is not that bad. About your standard reload for 100 magazines. Yeah, or 100 round magazine. It's, it's not terrible at all. Now we're going to go over to the other target again so we can see. This thing is purely accurate. I mean, look at that. It's a fucking laser. And let's look at the pull on it. A very, very slight, very minor right pull that's barely even noticeable. You might get more of that at, like, extreme range. But again, I mean, this thing, look, look at the ammo capacity it carries, too. It's got 500 rounds. You want to be out in the field for a while? This is your gun. You want to kill people at mid-range out to 25 meters? This is your gun. You know, you, you're you just using it as a general multi-purpose gun? This is your gun. I mean, it, it competes with the Orion in some aspects. It competes with the, the Maw in some aspects. It competes with the Flare. This thing is just solid. Um, and, and again, I came into it with a very negative understanding that this is a shit gun. And I was wrong. I was straight up fucking wrong. This is my favorite gun on Vanny right now for uh, Heavy Assault. The VX-29 Polaris is just good. Um, it takes all of the shortcomings of the Rhino and just amends them and makes it just utterly flawless execution as to how the LMG performs. Uh, I kind of wish the Rhino got this treatment. I, I wish it had access to soft point ammunition. You know, get rid of that advanced forward grip if that's what it takes to get it, because it doesn't need it, and it has no no identity compared to the bowl. So, whereas I would use the bowl on uh, TR, which is kind of unique, the Polaris is just so damn good that you can't say no to it. Um, if you're looking to headshot and you're a very good precision aim person, use this and put the soft point ammo on. At the 25 meters, you'll be headshotting people. And it just it's such a good gun. I mean, let me put off some range rounds here. Look at that. It's just so smooth. I know, I, I'm biased. But anyways, so that's my opinions on these weapons. Um, I will... I will give a review of the Battle Goose sometime. Um, we're not doing it right now, but uh, I will I will give a overview of uh, the Beetlejuice and kind of give my opinion on it. To, uh, to my feel with it, it's basically... It's an Orion without the grip, so it's a little more wild. Um, so you would use it in situations in which you are concerned about ammo or um, if, if you feel like you can um, manage it easily. Um, you can fire it off, overheat the damn thing, and then switch to a secondary, and then pull it back out, and it's ready to go. So it kind of you know takes the reload mechanic out of it. Anyways, that's my opinion on Vanu. Um, so the LMG is quite good, quite different, and I kind of wish uh, one of them was a little bit um, more available to TR, but. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or want to tell me I'm a jackass, uh, the comments are available down below, and uh, I'll try to respond, respond to you back when I can. Um, and hopefully this was both educational and entertaining. Thanks for watching. See ya.